Remember, he only became a heavyweight less than three years ago. And From Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with silver trim, weighing an even 215 pounds. He has a professional record of 26 victories with seven defeats, and he has demonstrated his punching power, scoring 23 KOs in those 26 victories. Ladies and gentlemen, ranked number 12 by the IBF, fighting out of Salem, Virginia, the challenger, Smokin' Bert Cooper. And across the ring in the blue corner, his opponent, wearing the blue and gold colors and weighing an even 210 pounds. This 1984 <laughs> Olympic bronze yeah. medalist was the first of his great 84 U.S. Olympic team to win a world title as a professional. That was for the Cruiserweight Championship. He now is a two-time world champion with a perfect record of 26 and 0, 21 knockout victories. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, presenting the undisputed, undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Evander. dry and a little cold will he come out here and really just take it out of Cooper immediately let him know he doesn't have a chance to win or is he going to let Cooper build his confidence well you know I, I think this first round is very significant again and significant again in front of the hometown people maybe trying a little too hard you have to remember he, he hasn't had a fight in 217 days and Bert Cooper has been an active fighter and while Cooper has broken a sweat and does look warmed up, Evander Holyfield, as Larry Merchant pointed out, is completely dry. And Holyfield starts out establishing the jab. Cooper throws a long right hand and misses. Evander will not want to let Cooper inside with his face on his chest. That's where Bird is most effective. Good body punches by Holyfield. Cooper loses his balance. He was in serious trouble there for a moment. And Holyfield hit him twice when he got himself straight. Holyfield wobbled him, wobbled him a little bit with that left hook. And he got an uppercut in there, too. Cooper is groggy for a second. Holyfield with a chance for an uncharacteristic early knockout. He's not normally that kind of fighter. It's been six years since Evander Holyfield scored a first-round knockout. Back when he weighed about 180 pounds. The left hook in the body, Jim, was the punch that really hurt him. After the right hand, he dug a left hook underneath. Beautiful left hook to the body. Long time to go in the first round. Cooper comes over the top with a right, but he left himself open. There's that quick right hand of Cooper's on the inside. Very effective with that right hand, Cooper. He looks as though his head is clearing. Come on, come on. You see a guy go down like a body shot. In this division, you think of Tyson Spinks. Another right hand right on the button, but that time Cooper didn't budge. Come on, Vander, keep him up, let's go. Well, is surprising me. He's really not using any lateral movement at all. He's right there, he's fighting, fighting with a fighter. And this is what he said he wouldn't do. The next time you go down, it's going to cost you a point. Okay. And where are you coming from? The van low didn't, blow. Didn't, didn't, really didn't like that low blow. Pulled his trunks down even further. Now 
Cooper is starting to land that right hand over the top. He's gotten it in there twice. Holyfield off balance after missing the right, but he comes back with a left of the body. And Cooper's covering up again. Well, Evander is getting the best of this round, but he certainly is fighting a Cooper-type round. I agree with you, Gil. We all thought that Cooper was a good opponent for Holyfield because he would have to box and move against him as he will against big heavyweights, including Tyson. But he's elected to take the initiative. Stay close to him as you can. When you get in there, dig that body. Okay? Yeah. Come on, stand up. You just heard in the corner, they're telling him to go for the body. Apparently, they saw a soft underbelly there. And Holyfield was following orders, apparently, because that was as wicked a body shot as you'll see him ever land. of the accuracy of his punches according to punch stat in round one 65 percent connect rate and give cooper credit for surviving that he's, he's come here determined to fight of well, course some people look at holyfield foreman and say well evander doesn't have a heavyweight punching power well this is the cooper in my opinion that fought ray mercer he certainly got hurt with that left hook to the body but he got up and he's bombing back as you can see there he's determined We've got a war early on. And so many things can happen in a fight when guys are fighting the way the Holyfield is fighting Cooper. They, they can bang heads, they can get busted up. I mean, I'm sure that they're very concerned in Holyfield's corner. In my opinion, he can, he can use lateral movement to just completely outbox Cooper, but he's, he's chose to fight him and get him out of there. A lot of people ask, Holyfield's co-trainer Lou Duva about the mental adjustment problem of fighting somebody on one week's notice and Duva said well I want my guy to get hit a couple of times it'll clear his head and wake him up well he's been hit a couple of times Jim. we also have to wonder Gil whether this crowd enthusiasm hasn't stirred Holyfield up well, that's what we were talking about he's fighting in front of his, his hometown fans and he may be trying to be a little too impressive. He's got nailed with a couple of pretty good punches this round. Holyfield digs a left to the chest. Cooper has landed two or three straight rights. Well, you know, most Philadelphia fighters are left hookers, but you have to you have to really watch Bert Cooper's right hand. It's a sneaky short right hand. That's one area where he's gotten a lot better. He was almost exclusively a left hooker early in his career. Of course, that was his Frazier was teaching. Right hand to the body by Holyfield. Cooper wobbles again. Good uppercut by Cooper. That was the Mike Tyson combination. Wide right hand to bring the right hand underneath. Good left to the body by Cooper inside. And the right hand. There's that sneaky right hand right on the button. Since the knockdown midway through round one, it's been an even fight. Round two coming to a close. Bert Cooper establishing himself. Evander Holyfield banging away. Be first. Don't let him get off. Come on, that's what you're doing. This guy. 
Don't be designing. We'll use your defense. Walk right around. Walk right around. It's pretty walk early for a fighter to be down. asking what round it is, Gil. So All right, then walk I don't know how much walk longer he's prepared to go at this pace. But on the other hand, they're telling Holyfield in his corner to play a little bit more defense. Holyfield lands a left hook. And Cooper wobbles again. Cooper grins as if to say you didn't hurt me. That usually means you did. And that's exactly what he did with Ray Mercer. He'd take those bombs right on the button, and then he'd grin at Mercer. I think uh, Cooper's soft spot is to the body, and I think, really think that's where uh, Georgie Benton told Holyfield to go to work, to the body. Yeah, the instruction was quit tying him up. You waste a lot of energy that way. Bang to the body instead. Easier said than done when the man puts his head right on your chest all the time. And again, even though Holyfield, in my opinion, is winning the fight, he's fighting Cooper's fight. And there's that big, there's that sneaky right hand of Bernie Cooper's. And Holyfield wobbles in the corner. The champion in trouble. Cooper bangs away. Holyfield almost goes down. Mills Lane's going to call it a knockdown and give him the count. Evander Holyfield forward in the third round. There's that sneaky and right hand, hand, Jim. Holyfield in serious, serious trouble. And he's overworking that right hand. A long way to go. Holyfield almost went down again. Holyfield just really doesn't know where he is right now. His head is starting to clear. He's right fighting now. on heart alone right now, Jim. Heart alone is keeping a van of Holyfield up. And Cooper may have punched himself out a little bit with that flurry. Oh, what a right hand by Holyfield. And now it's Cooper who is standing stock still. Sensational right cross. Holyfield landed to start this rally. But Burt Cooper won't go down. You're looking at one of the men of Holyfield. Better watch out and better remember defense. Believe me, right at this moment, anybody can get hit, can go. One of the memorable rounds in recent heavyweight history. It isn't even over yet. Evander is fighting strictly with heart at the moment, Jim. No brains, no smarts. Just trying to outgut the other guy. There's that sticky right hand again. Bang, right on the Holyfield chin. Evander is wobbling as the round comes to a close. It doesn't get much better than that, but it shocked a lot of people. Here we'll find Cooper coming in, though he was tired. There, there's the punch that really hurt Holyfield. Paying the price of not fighting the fight he planned for. And here, this is just an example of one man's incredible determination, Gil. He has never been knocked down. Tremendous conditioning. And he took over that round with about a minute and a half to go. But Larry, in a heavyweight fight, one punch by either guy can change things completely around. Well, you saw it happen twice in that round, gentlemen. And there's that right hand. I, I, as I say, Bright works that overtime. Look at the will of Evander Holyfield, staring Cooper in the face and pounding away. And what about the will of Bert Cooper? He's got, he got nailed with some... He told us yesterday he would round. never quit again. That's exactly right. He's proven it now. We questioned him about that, Jim. Took his hat off, said he'd never quit. I guarantee you I'll never quit, and he's not quitting. A left hook bomb inside by Cooper slows Holyfield down for a second. 
for the life of me, I don't know why Evander Holyfield is not using lateral movement to going side to side. He should be boxing. Could he be badly overtrained, Gil? Well, that certainly is a possibility. Three months in the gymnasium, changing opponents. Evander told us that in the last 10 days he slowed down his training because he was really ready more than two weeks ago. That's very dangerous, particularly for a big fight. Cooper's punches seem to have slowed down now, Jim. I think that right cross in the middle of the last round from punches. Holyfield had but a lot he, he would be dangerous, Bert Cooper, if he was falling down. There's that right hand again. This appears to be one of those fights, Gil, that Holyfield said he wasn't going to fight anymore, that he wasn't going to just go in and trade punches. Larry, I just had a suspicion that, that Holyfield was going to fight this kind of a fight, and I still felt that he'd win the fight. But again, Bert Cooper has been the more active fighter by far, with Holyfield having a 217-day layoff and Cooper having four fights. I think certainly has helped Bert Cooper. And this has been another largely even round with both men having big flurries. Cooper grinning again. Holyfield lands an uppercut. Every time they break from one of those clinches, Evander has to watch for that right hand. What Bert Cooper does, he takes his right foot, he steps over and chops with that right hand. I'm surprised they haven't spotted that in Evander Holyfield's corner. But Cooper is definitely slowing down now. Yeah, they part of this round. Walking to his right. That's what he does. They have a heavyweight fight here every 21 years, but they sure have a good one. <laughs> Harold Letterman, how do you score it? Larry, 39 to 36, three rounds to one, Evander Holyfield. The third round, they definitely called it 10-9, Bert Cooper. Even with the knockdown, I thought Evander Holyfield fought back enough from a 10-8 to bring it back up to 10-9 late in the round. So I've got it 3-1, an extra point for Evander in the first round. Oh, I'll give him. Wait. Just pick your shot. Pick your shot. Stay close to him. Drink some water. You wearing him down. You wearing him down. Now just walk around him and pot shot him with the right hand. Hit him in the body. You have a good defense now. Right back in you, baby. Right back in you. Right. Now the guy's watching. Pot him. Bert Cooper may be the only consumer in America with more money to spend this Christmas than he anticipated about a month ago. And if he keeps this up, he's going to have a lot more money in future Christmases. It very well may be. And in the band of Holyfield's corner, they told, told him to walk by Cooper around inside and bang him to the body. But that's what Cooper's been doing to him. Up there, the big way in. And now Cooper's, Cooper's in well. trouble. Holyfield banging away with the right hand, but Burke won't go down. Oh, look at that. These are awesome punches. And Cooper has just about had enough. And he decided not to quit. He almost quit and decided not to do it. And he'll take punishment for it. The uppercut's been the punch, Jim. There it is again. The uppercut's the punch. There it is again. Evander found the key. There it is again. Yep. Left to the body, right uppercut up the middle. He's landing it over and over and over. Again. I think Mills Lane was right on the verge of stopping it about 10 seconds ago. But you can't stop it when Cooper has been this courageous. And Evander Holyfield is showing signs of being tired. And believe me, an uppercut is a very effective punch, but it's dangerous to throw from outside. Round's only half over, and Holyfield is punched out. Punched out. We can't throw anything right now. Time out now as Mills Lane wants to look at Holyfield's glove. It is broken, the right glove is broken. Both fighters are gonna get a long rest. 
And I think that Holyfield needs it more than Cooper, despite the fact that Cooper's been taking the battering. I don't think Holyfield would have thrown another punch for 20 or 30 seconds. You know, sometimes the opportunity to fight for a title, especially the heavyweight title, just makes a man galvanize all of his forces into giving the best he's ever had. Shades much as much as Douglas did in Tokyo. All right, you've got shades of Muhammad Ali, Henry Cooper here with the torn glove. Harold Letterman, what's the rule? Chip, they get the uh, the fighter who doesn't have the torn glove to a neutral corner. They're not supposed to let a second talk to him. In the meantime, they take advantage of his, to his corner and change the glove. They always have a spare set of gloves at all times. But in the famous Henry Cooper, Muhammad Ali incident. There it had the torn glove happened between rounds because Angelo Dundee was trying to find some time for Ali. Well, said it did happen between rounds, absolutely right. I thought you said it happened <laughs> no, during the round. This, he's punching so hard. I don't know if I've ever seen in a big fight one fighter punching so hard that he actually rips the glove from punching. Well, so far, Holyfield has thrown 45 punches in this round and landed 36 of them. What kind of a war is it? Both men, to this point in the fight, have landed more than half their shots. And Bert Cooper now has a cut on the side of his right eye. It's a small cut, but... When we resume fighting, there'll be a minute and 29 left in round number five. Bert Cooper, Philadelphia fighter, now lives in Virginia. Come on, baby. You can, take the, around, you can take the fighter oh, out of Philadelphia, but you can't take the Philadelphia out of the fighter with this exhibition of courage and will. Courage, yes, but Philadelphia is famous for the left hook. With Bert Cooper, it's been the right hand. Maybe he learned that in Virginia. Go. Good on, thing. Go, <laughs> and they go resume. <laughs> See what he does inside, Bert. He takes that right foot, steps over with it, and bangs with that right hand. Uh, let's see if Evander remembers to goes, go back to the left of the body and the right uppercut. There it is. There's that yep. uppercut, Jim. He didn't forget. He missed it that time, but he certainly didn't forget it. All right, we'll step back, guys. We'll step back. Here we go. Come on. taking tremendous punishment. This has become a, a question of wills and conditioning. That's what Evander Holyfield should do. Take a step back once in a while. Go side to side to make Bert Cooper miss. Get him up, Evander. Conventional wisdom is that Evander Holyfield is the best trained, best conditioned heavyweight in the sport and maybe in the history of the sport. But is he overtrained coming into this fight? Cooper lands a left hook, and round five comes to a close. You're okay, baby. You're okay. Take your time and pick your shots. Stay inside. Hold your head back. One, three. Yeah, it's on the eye leak. You're doing all right. You're doing all right, though. Come on. Get him in deep. Yeah. Let's let's take a look at the effect of this, these uppercuts. Look at that beautiful uppercut by a, a Vander Holyfield. And watch the way he works it over time. One on top. There it is again, underneath. How Bert Cooper is taking that punishment and firing back is beyond me. Mills Lane instructs Eddie Aliano, Bert Cooper's cut man, to take some of the grease off of his right eye. You may remember before the fight, fellas, that I said that sometimes we're surprised by these kinds of fights because it's not as easy on the champion as we anticipated. And this is sure one of those times. 
First time I've seen a Vander with a little bounce in his legs, though, is when he came out of the corner, Jim. But he's right back inside again. Now he's bouncing a little bit. He can punch and move. He punches and waits for the receipt. Exploding right hand by Cooper to the body. Holyfield again with the uppercut. And now, what? There goes Evander again. Anytime he lands a punch, he stays still and waits for the receipt. Waits for the guy to hit him back. And Cooper is hitting him with left hooks and sneaky inside right hands. You know, Evander Holyfield always had a problem with stamina in the amateurs. It's never really showed in the pros, but in this fight, he seems to me like he's a little weary. Well, one thing you know for sure, gentlemen, regardless of what happens from here on out, some of the writers here are going to write tomorrow that if the vendor had fought this way against Mike Tyson, he'd have been knocked out. Or he may have knocked out Mike Tyson. That's possible, too. I mean, do you think Tyson could take those uppercuts that the vendor was nailing Cooper with? cut is not opening up on the right eye of Burt Cooper and I mentioned the name Eddie Aliano as you watch that cut throughout the fight remember that Aliano is one of the best if not the best in the business at closing cuts that's so important Jim to have somebody in there that doesn't panic knows what he's doing keeps the fighter in the battle there's that oh what a right hand but they're coming fewer and a little, a little more far between Cooper tried the body shot uppercut tandem. Didn't work. Now Evander lands another right uppercut. The heart and will of Evander Holyfield. Much celebrated but tested tonight. Holyfield has not been knocked down since an amateur fight in 1979. He did not go down to the canvas tonight but it was scored a knockdown by the referee. And we are halfway through. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Check it out. What have they got on in front of my eye? Hey, tell the ref, please. Tell the ref. Hey, ref! Come here, come here. He's burning my eye. He got some kind of ointment that's burning his eye, coming off his body. Burning his eye. Get that stuff off his head. Here you go. He's got an ointment on his body. Get inside and dig that body. And do the Tyson inside. We're around right here. Seven. Take him, pick the shot. Dig. Okay. There you see the punch stat numbers, tremendous number of punches being landed in this fight for heavyweights. Now, er, 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 earlier we, we talked about the cut glove, now we're talking about ointment in an eye which goes back to Ollie Liston 1, although that wasn't exactly ointment, it was an acidic substance. So we're getting a little bit of everything. We're getting some boxing history in front of us. Let's see how the boxing history winds up. And here's the odd consistency, Larry. Every time in the last 30 years that a man named Cooper has challenged for the heavyweight <laughs> title, there's been a cut glove. <laughs> Evander Holyfield isn't using the jab a lot for Jim. When a guy gets tired, it's easy to hit him with the jab. Guys always start out jabbing, and then later on they forget all about the jab. Now is the time when he can use a good stiff jab. Cooper with two overhand rights, and Holyfield lands another uppercut. You're right, he's almost abandoned the jab for the time being. I wonder if he's embarrassed enough in front of his hometown fans that he wants to score a knockout. He'll be more embarrassed if he can sit with a couple more of those right hands and goes down. The opportunity to jab is there, you can see it. 
Mike Cooper's walking right straight in, in a straight line. Oh, what a bomb that uppercut was. But Cooper keeps coming back. There's another one. Cooper grinning again. The man that has to be saying to himself, what's holding this guy up? And how much more energy can I expend? Do you question his punching power? Well, he's, well, Ray Mercer was also supposed to be a good puncher, and I saw Cooper do exactly the same thing with Ray Mercer, so uh, maybe it's the fact that Cooper can really take a great punch. What a turnaround that would be for Bert Cooper. I saw him quit against Reggie Gross in January of 1986, his first loss, after being hit by one punch. We should point out, Jim, that in those days, he was on drugs, he wasn't training seriously. He really was going down the tubes, and Joe Fraser, his original trainer, claims to have quit him because of that. And Bert Cooper landed some very effective punches to the body in that last exchange. And when a guy gets tired, those body punches can become very, very effective. Well, for a while after that third round flurry, Cooper didn't go to the body at all. But he started to do it again. But now Holyfield rips another uppercut, and Cooper standing stuck still. This could be it now. Only 15 seconds to go in the round. Not much time for Evander. Cooper staying right there. Target practice. But he's not going to get it. I don't think he's going to get it. Mills Lane has seen enough. Mills Lane stops the fight. And I thought it was a very good move on Mills Lane's part. He couldn't have known what the time was. It's probably about 2.58 or 2.59. Doesn't make any difference, Larry. But he was taking too much punishment. He gave a gallant effort. That's enough. I agree. I thought Mills Lane did a remarkable job. He stepped in exactly when he should have stepped in. One of the best in the business, Mills Lane. Well, I'll tell you, if Damiani had been the opponent, we wouldn't have seen this many punches landed if they'd have been here for 50 rounds. They wouldn't have seen <laughs> as many punches land as if, if they took the Queen Elizabeth over and fought on the boat all the way over. Well, gentlemen, thank God for Burt Cooper. <laughs> Although I don't know that Evander Holyfield is saying that right now. What a battle. You know, Jim, in the old days, if a fighter put up a performance like this, the promoter would sometimes be generous and give him a bonus. Do you think that Bert Cooper earned a bonus in this fight? Bert well, Cooper, who's never made more than 100 grand, is getting 750 tonight. Well, no, no, he's getting closer to between four and five. Let's take a look at this impressive barrage, this fusillade of hard punches at the end of the round. But his bonus will be the fact that he will get more fights against some of these young heavyweights. And, and look, at, look at Mills Lane. He's right there, has the action right in front of him, the way a good referee should, this, right on top of things. Yeah, and this, incidentally, as we watch this from another angle, is a homecoming for Mills Lane. The mayor you see there, he was, he's from, he's from Reno, of course, but he is originally from Georgia, from a prominent family in Georgia. He came here to show his stuff, and he came through. And so did Evander Holyfield. In desperate trouble in round number three, challenged in a way that few expected him to be challenged by a Burt Cooper who showed heart and will and courage and a heck of a right hand. Holyfield demonstrated that the well-publicized heart is by no means overestimated. He came back from adversity, took over the fight again, and banged Cooper out of there. Jim, it was just an absolutely great performance by both fighters. You have to remember that uh, Cooper had Holyfield on the edge of a, right on the brink of a KO. It looked to me that any second Holyfield could go, even after he made that rally back. He was still, Cooper was still dangerous, and he still had Holyfield in trouble. And this says it all. Mills Lane with the sympathetic nod to Cooper like, yeah, you were great. But that was it. And right now, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, before I give the official time, how about a round of applause for a young challenger here tonight who showed a great amount of courage and fighting heart, Bert Cooper. The official time, referee Mills Lane steps in and stops the bout. 
two minutes, 58 seconds of the seventh round. The winner by TKO, still the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Evander, real deal, holy field. Let's go to Larry Merchant with the heavyweight champion of the world. Larry? Evander, congratulations. Uh, that was an easy one. No, it wasn't easy at all. <laughs> Bert Cooper was very gain, and uh, for a guy to jump in there uh, not too long for a notice, you know, he fought his hard out, and I have to commend him, you know, for, for you wanting did, the title. Did, did you jump on him early instead of boxing because you felt that he couldn't be in good condition? Well, not at all. Uh, uh, Bert Cooper, the type of guy, wants to get the momentum. You know, he, it's easy for him to stand there is, you know, my strategy is to go out there and try to frustrate him from the start, try to uh, make sure is he in condition to jump on him where he has to use that energy early and not just coast through the early rounds and have some for the later I round. guess the real thing we all want to know was how badly were you hurt in the fourth round? Well, you know, I wasn't hurt badly. I, I don't know how bad one could be hurt. You know, he hit me with good shots and is, uh, I guess, would be quite common. If you get hit with consecutive punches like I got hit with at the time and uh, the point of recovery. Well, Evander, you were reeling around there almost like you didn't know quite where you were. You know, I, I, I was, I, I feel that I had, uh, I had everything together, but when you get hit with a good shot, it's not like you can bring your body back uh, together like you want to. My mind was there, and I realized, you know, that he hit me with a good shot, and I was trying to keep him hitting, uh, getting hit with another shot, but I guess that time didn't have control of it whole body at the time. Did your conditioning get you through? Sure. Well, yeah, yeah. Conditioning is a big part of it. Conditioning is when uh, you get hit with a good shot and you're able to come back as quick as if I, you know, if I did. You threw a tremendous number of uppercuts in that fight. That landed. How did he take those punches? Well, I, I feel that uh, when you're in a situation with Bert Cooper, you know, don't take nothing from him. He got a lot to gain. And by coming out and taking the fight on the short notice, he just he was geared up and he came out to fight and and wasn't taking nothing for granted. Were you trying to be too impressive in your hometown, trying to get him out of there too fast? Do you feel? Well, not at all. I, I went out there and uh, I did what I felt that was right at the time. You know, I boxed him and he got in there to make it uh, more of a, a brawl. I couldn't get away from him fast enough to use the boxing tactics because it was early in the round. It was just brute strength. And he was he was strong enough to force me into fighting uh, a more of a, a brawling type fight right then and there. It didn't it didn't really look like you ever boxed him the way you said you would box. You you indicated you were never going to get in one of those slugfests again. Well, you know you go you go in you go mm -hmm. into a fight with a thought of plan. Well, I'm a boxer's guy, but uh, uh, he was uh, aggress aggressive enough to put me in a fight that I didn't want to be in but I was forced to fight that fight uh, that he would still load the rounds. All right, let's look ahead now. You've been in the gym for almost every day for three, three months. months. What are your plans? Is, are you going to just wait to see the outcome of Mike Tyson's legal difficulties before you get back in the gym? Just how are you going to go about it? Actually, I really just, I would like to go back and rest. Uh, I truly believe that been in the gym a long time, stuck a little starch out, but you know, I, I need to rest and get myself back mentally and not, you know, worry about Mike Tyson problem or anybody else problem right now. Just, you know, get plenty of rest and be ready for the you know, next fight. Uh, just one quick question to Lou. Do you think that you're just going to go on ice now until Tyson's difficulties are resolved? No, we ma we manage uh, we manage and train Evander Holyfield. He's his own man. Uh, we're not going to wait around for Mike Tyson. When Mike Tyson becomes available, we'll be glad to fight him the following day. Up until then, he's going to do his own. He's going to do his own so, thing. So there is a chance he might take on another opponent before Tyson. Absolutely not. We're not going to just sit around and wait for Tyson. We'd like to fight Tyson tomorrow if we could. But if he's not available, then we'll go on to somebody else. I don't really think you want to fight Mike Tyson tomorrow after a night like this. <laughs> but, but congratulations, Evander. Back to you, Jim and Gil. All right. Thanks very much, Larry. Gil, time to assess what we saw. The first question, how much of it was bad Holyfield? How much was great Cooper? Well, as Evander Holyfield himself said, Bert Cooper made him fight the kind of fight that Bert Cooper 
wanted to fight. In other words, Bert Cooper was doing the dictating in there. And as we had mentioned earlier in the show, Evander beat him at his own game. That's just about what happened in the fight. So that's a good statement on Evander's ability to adjust. Oh, absolutely. There's no question about it. He fought Bert Cooper's fight, and he still won the fight. Does his chin become more questionable than ever before after the knockdown in round number three, or what was scored a knockdown? No, I don't think so, Jim. You know, if a heavyweight, one good heavyweight, especially a guy that has a snap on the punch that Bert Cooper has, if he, if he hits anybody right, they're going to wobble. And that's what uh, Evander Holyfield did. Let's see if Bert can wobble Larry Merchant. Larry? Okay, Bert, that was a great fight you put on, particularly the fact that you didn't have a long time to prepare for this fight. But as you promised us, you didn't quit. No, I didn't quit. No, no, no. I was just, I was just, uh, I don't know, uh, just a referee, you know, see it, something he didn't like. Yeah, so he why, did, why didn't the referee stop the fight whenever you, Evander was in trouble uh, like in that? In the fourth round, you hurt Evander. Uh -huh. Are you going to be looking back on that round for the rest of your life, asking yourself, why couldn't I have finished him? Yes, yeah. You be but, uh, yourself, why did Mills Lane step in? Yeah, and stop but uh, the fight? You but are we, we get another chance? I hope, you know, hope we get another chance before he retired. You know? does, does the, do you think that somehow this fight, this showing, uh, uh, puts away the, re the your career, which has been up and down and and uh, erratic, uh -huh. and that this puts you on a different track as an athlete? Yes, exactly. No more ESP in fights. <laughs> no more, no more ESPN fights. No more, uh, yeah, ESPN fights. No more ESPN fights. Well, no, no, unless it's a little, you know, something to get in shape with. No fight, uh, stay in shape. Thank you very much, Bert. We'll be happy to have you back here on each HBO. Uh, back to you, Jim. All right, Larry. Well, we sure wouldn't have said that after Cooper fought our own George Foreman. George made Bert quit on the stool after two rounds, but of course. Cooper says that that was after a long weekend of partying, three days without sleep, and certainly entirely different conditions than the kind that Burt brought into the ring tonight. George Foreman joins us once again.